Seems like everyone and their dear old Daddy Doug, Daddy Doug has an online car auction site these days. They've got names like Bring a Trailer, Rad for Sale, Cars and Bids, and more where you can literally bid on your car nerd dream car from your phone. But with it being so easy to drop your hard-earned Dogecoin on a car you haven't driven or seen in person, are these sites the new hunting ground for scammers? Some people seem to think so. How safe is it to buy a car from these sites? And why are more of these auction sites popping up every day? Today, we're gonna look at the advent of these new auction sites, how they work, and what to look out for as a buyer or seller. Big thanks to Amaze for sponsoring this episode. Nolan and I have had a great time working with Amaze at James's private island off the coast of Costa Rica. To bring one of you the chance to win this Ram 1500 TRX, taxes and shipping included. And you'll be taking home $20,000 cash. Quick, everyone in the TRX! Come Nolan, let's go quicker! Go faster, Nolan! Nobody panic! I just forgot to tell you guys about my T-Rex. But How it has a reinforced frame, specialized Bilstein suspension, and 35-inch tires? That means we can roll over anything? No, I mean the literal dinosaur chasing after us right now. What? Don't worry. Thanks to the TRX's 6.2 liter Hemi Hellcat V8 that pumps out 702 horsepower, there's no way that big dumb dino's gonna catch us. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, you guys. I got so excited about giving away this truck that I totally forgot about my extensive menagerie of real dinosaurs. I get it, James. It's exciting, especially when every donation helps support Teen Rubicon, a nonprofit organization that utilizes the skills and experience of military veterans to help people prepare, respond, and recover to disasters. So for your chance to win this Ram 1500 TRX, head on over to amaze.com slash donut media. Use code RAM150 and receive 150 additional entries. Again, that is omaze.com slash donut media. Uh, James? Uh, I forgot about the flying ones. <sighs> we should have had a helicopter next time. I have a helicopter. Come on, Nolan. There's scientifically accurate, real looking dinosaurs out here. Oh. Oh. I fell out, Nolan! I fell out! So to understand what makes these new sites so different, we first gotta look at how buying a car at auction used to work. On the low end, there were estate sales, police auctions, and public auctions. These were auctions where the cars were either owned by the entity holding the auction, or they were at least responsible for them. On the day of the auction, you could physically inspect a car at the auction lot and even start them up if they started, that is. This was a place to try to get a good deal. Maybe you could find a diamond in the rough that no one at the auction that particular day was interested in. Or at the very least, you'd find something simple and reliable that might be worth more if you got your knucks a little greasy. These types of auctions are relatively safe for the buyer. Auctions sometimes even offer an auction guarantee, a warranty on the drivetrain of the car. And if something isn't quite what was promised, they might even have an arbitrator on site to reconcile any dispute between buyer and seller. So while there are a few systems in place that might put your mind at ease, the inventory isn't exactly a bunch of rare sports cars, and you have to go all the way down to the actual auction and stand all day in a building that doesn't have AC to keep up with this many people, and you're not guaranteed to leave with anything good. Unlike my dad, who scored a cherry 93 Dodge Spirit back in 2000, we hit a lot of baseball practices in that bad boy. Kinda ugly though. On the whole other side of auctions though, there are the classic car auctions, and you've probably seen these on TV before. I'm talking Barrett Jackson, Meekum, Bonhams, Gooding and Company, anything during Monterey Car Week. These auctions are high-end events where every car is likely to sell for six, seven, or even eight figure prices. These auctions rarely have something as trivial as a drivetrain warranty, but you know what they do have? An appraiser, someone whose job it is to inspect a car, verify its authenticity, and set its valuation. These companies put their reputation on the line to sell the car, so they make sure that anything that crosses their auction block is exactly what it says it is, or at least as close as they can verify. But that's what buying a car in auction was for a long time, either super high-end collector cars or bottom of the barrel. For most people, buying a car without test driving it or being able to talk to the seller is a bit unnerving. But if you knew how to play the game and were smart with your money and confident in your ability to assess a car, an auction was a good place to find a deal. But there was a gap in the auction world, a space somewhere between the six-figure classics and high-mileage clunkers that needed to be filled. This is where our new auction sites come in. And the biggest by far is bring a trailer. 
When Bring a Trailer started in 2007, it wasn't even an auction site. It was just a blog that sent out a weekly email noting interesting listings on eBay. But as more and more people started subscribing, sellers realized that having their car in the Bring a Trailer email was great exposure and wanted to start paying for placement in the blog. Now there's over 400,000 users and only half of them are lurkers like myself scrolling during Zoom meetings. If we take a look at views for last month, we can see from the trend line that it's headed towards negative infinity. I think it probably has something to do with Nolan's haircut. Scrolling Bring a Trailer is like scrolling through Instagram. It's a curated assembly of cars that are interesting, unique, and have a story. With each listing, you get a pretty detailed description of the car along with dozens of professionally taken photos. And it really draws you in, especially when you compare it to scrolling used car listings with a price listed as one, two, three, four dollars. And if that's not enough for you, they have a public comment section where interested buyers ask questions about the cars and specs. And the seller will usually post extra links like a walk around video or idling and shifting, all the stuff you might check if you went to see the car in person. But they're not the only site. In 2020 alone, the 80s and 90s era car show Radwood started their own auction site, Rad for Sale, and YouTube legend Doug DeMiro launched Cars and Bids. Real quick, let's talk about how these sites actually make money, because they're not just websites. They are businesses. Auction sites generally keep the doors open one of two ways. Charging the seller a small listing fee, a tactic even Craigslist employs, and the more lucrative method of taking a small percent of the final sale. Bring a Trailer does cap this amount at $5,000, but as a rule, the more a car sells for, all the better for the site, which has some worrying implications I'll talk about later. Now you might think that a website full of desirable cars that are being honestly represented is too good to be true, and you wouldn't be alone. Plenty of people can see the potential for buyers to get scammed when you look at how these websites work. As I mentioned, Bring a Trailer didn't start out as an auction site. It was just a curated list of cool things you can buy on eBay, kind of like thisiswhyimbroke.com. It was in no way affiliated with the seller and couldn't vouch for the legitimacy of the car. Today, the site works in a kind of similar way. Yes, they vet the car a bit and provide as much info as possible, but there's no auction guarantee. All sales are as is. There's no official arbitrator or appraiser to talk to, just the other users. And as far as the actual transaction is concerned, you're on your own. Sites like Bring a Trailer, Rad for Sale, and Cars and Bids are in no way responsible for the security of the actual transaction or its legitimacy. So you go from scrolling a Pinterest board of nice cars to all of a sudden having to wire money to a dude in Michigan just like you would if you had bought the car in Craigslist. Now, I wanna be clear here. I don't think these sites have a responsibility to do any more than they're currently doing. I do think it's a buyer's responsibility to treat a purchase seriously and not assume that things will be taken care of for you just because the site has a better UI than Facebook Marketplace. But I get that people start to feel uneasy when the pretty, well-presented site turns out to be very similar to the normal buying process once you've actually won an auction. It feels a bit like a bait and switch, I guess. So much so that they think there's some kind of scam going on. Like the 55 DeSoto they just paid for is actually gonna be a Geo Metro. But to that I say, it's time for a reality check. The thing about reality, it always gets checked. Life's not fair. Look, to get a car listed on any of these sites, the seller has to go through the listing process. Extensive photos are required as well as records of the car, and it's not just a checkbox list of questions. These sites are run by enthusiasts like you and me, and a scam happening on their site would be as big of an issue for them as it would be for the buyer. So if a seller is uncommunicative or just a little shady, they're not likely to get their listing approved. You've just been checked. The truth is that these auction sites benefit from the engagement of bidders because people ask questions about the listed cars publicly. If a user asks something not disclosed, let's say a recall, the seller's answer is then visible to anyone else bidding. It may not have been a question you thought to ask, and now you know the answer. And at the end of the day, the winning bid is just a promise to buy the car. If you show up and the car isn't what was advertised, you're not legally obligated to buy it. There's no bank lien on your house if you backed out. Sure, the seller might be mad, and if you back out without good reason, you would probably get banned from a site, but it's not like the feds are coming to your door. So don't worry, there's no scam, at least 
not the kind you're thinking of. In July of 2020, an E30 M3 sold on Bring a Trailer for a quarter of a million dollars. Even though this particular one only had 8,000 miles on it, many people agreed that that was an insane price for this car. After the auction had closed, a few users wanted to know more about this richy rich buyer and decided to run the VIN of the car through services like Carfax until they saw it change hands. Six months later, the car still showed the same number of owners. Why would someone buy a car for 250K and then never take ownership of it? Well, to answer that, we need to make a journey to the speculation zone. That's right, two bits this episode. What if our BMW seller never intended to sell their ultra low mileage M3, but they had a second M3 he wanted to get rid of? They listed the 8,000 mile one and either created a second count or had a friend bid to make sure they won it at a stupidly high price. Then riding the artificial hype created by this high priced auction sold their other M3 for 20 to 40K more than what they would have gotten before. Before the 250K M3 sold, only one E30 M3 had ever sold for over $100,000 in the history of Bring a Trailer. In the nine months since that sale, four more have sold for over 100K. Sounds a little like someone's gaming the system. Now, admittedly, this sounds less like the speculation zone and more like the conspiracy corner on my part. And what's more likely is that the registration got delayed because of COVID or the site wasn't up to date, but it does illustrate a phenomenon that many buyers are frustrated with. In the normal world, this is known as the rising tide effect, but in the car world, it's now known as the bring a trailer effect. In ultra rare supercars, the rising tide effect was easy to see. One selling an auction changed the valuation of all the others. If a Ferrari 250 GTO sells an auction for 8.6 million and you've got one of the other 36 in the world, you now know yours is worth about 8.6 million. As they sell for more and more, the others increase in value as well. And today, that same 250 GTO is expected to fetch over $50 million in auction. But now because the popularity of these auction sites, people are seeing more entry-level collector cars sell for $10,000 to $20,000, the same cars that were listed on Craigslist for 4K four years ago. Does a car similar to yours selling an auction for a high price affect your car's value? Some people think it does. In fact, some people are using auction results to show their insurance companies that their car is worth more and should therefore pay out more if it got totaled. But I don't think that collector's auctions and used car sales are really in the same market. Many people who try and compare some used listing to an auction they saw completely ignore uh, spec, condition, or maintenance records, all things that would be checked in the approval process by those sites. Now you might not care about those things, things like mileage or maintenance records, and that's fair, but there's a difference between it mattering to you, the individual buyer, and it affecting the value of the car. Like I said, these auction sites are run by enthusiasts, and it's a place for unique cars to be appreciated. So naturally, that means people are more invested in investing. But I will admit that high prices on auction sites have led to a few optimistic used car posts on social media. No low ballers. I know what I got. Ha! I think the fear of the rising tide effect is legitimate, but it can't be blamed on auction sites because it's happened with every generation of car that has come before. As someone who was super into muscle cars, it was heartbreaking as a teenager to see the rising prices of Cudas and GTOs and Chevelles because it felt like even if I one day made more money, by then they would have gotten even more expensive and I could never catch up. And that's still true, it's still true to this day. Why does a rusty charger have to be 30 grand? You're out of your mind. They drive like boats. I wanna drive the rusty boat, okay? All cars appreciate and depreciate at a different rate and scale. But for the most part, they follow a similar parabola. From the day they leave the lot and go from new car to used car, they go down in value. The miles and years stack on until eventually they begin to plateau out. But then as there are less and less of them on the road, the value begins to go up. Sometimes it's because of nostalgia. Sometimes it's because the car becomes ironically cool. And sometimes, it's because the things that made the car good in the first place are now desirable again. But whatever it is, the car is only going to get rarer because it's not going to get made again. We saw this with the 60s muscle cars, we saw it again with the 70s Porsches, and now we're seeing it with 80s and 90s cars. We just happen to be seeing it through the sites like these. What I really wanted to see was one of these sites from the seller's point of view. So I called up my friends at Rad for Sale to see if they'd run us through the auction approval process. Now, since none of my cars are from the rad era, we used Max's BMW. 
We had Max give us all the info he would as if he was actually selling the car. He submitted over 40 Max quality photos. A lot of sites like Rad for Sale actually have a list of angles they want you to get. So, you know, the postings can be uniform and the customer gets a complete view of the car. After submitting our listing, a uh, rep from Rad for Sale responded in just a few hours saying that the listing was really good, but they actually wanted some pictures of the undercarriage of the car just so they could make sure it wasn't rusting away from beneath the driver's seat. That's kind of important. They also came back with some recommendations on what the reserve price should be, info on what parts of the car were gonna be the most desired and how to best market the car overall. You know, the, the, these are real people looking at these listings and making both sellers and buyers have a positive experience. And that goes across the board with all these sites that we've talked about today. So I think I figured out why there are so many of these auction sites popping up now. People wanted a better private seller buyer experience than Craigslist or Facebook. A place where people who are actually into cars could sell cars and a place where people respected the fact that we like to ask questions, know our specs, kick tires, and know a lot about what we're getting before we get it. While Bring a Trailer might be the big dog, I like that we have smaller and more niche sites like Rad for Sale and Cars and Bids and Hemmings Auctions because as a buyer, that means there's less people watching a single auction and more chance you might get a good deal. Seriously, check out those smaller ones. Don't sleep on them. That actually brings me back to the point I made earlier. Remember that conspiracy theory I had about the N3 prices rising? Well, what also makes those prices rise is the user base. Regardless of how a car appreciates or depreciates, the more people you have bidding on an auction, the more likely it is that someone will be willing to spend a lot more money. But an auction only sells for slightly higher than the second highest bidder is willing to pay. So even with one high roller in the auction, the price might not actually get that high. With an even larger user base though, it's more likely that two or more people with money to burn will get into a bidding war. When those four E30 M3s sold, the user count on Bring a Trailer was about half a million. When that first one sold in early 2018, the user count was way, way lower. So, is that an elaborate conspiracy or just the growth of an audience? If you've ever bought or sold a car at an auction, let me know in the comments. Was it a good experience? Would you do it again? If you like this video, hit that like button. It actually really does help us out. Uh, you know, you know how the algorithm is. Just, it's magic. If you want to see more of Max's car, check him out on Instagram at 35mm underscore cars. Also, follow Donut on Instagram and all social media at Donut Media. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Been posting a lot more of my photography lately. Be kind, take care of each other. I'll see you next time. Saddle up. Set your spurs on down. Donuts made the sickest hat in town. License, real tree, camo on your head. Yeah, that's what I said. Sing it. C A M O H A T. Baddest hat that you can't see. C A M O H A T. Made for you and me. So now you can represent your favorite automotive brand when you're on the road, on the lake or up in that blind. Only available at DonutMedia.com. Get you one. Whether you're fixing cars or in the woods, Donuts got you looking good in your C-A-M-O-H-A-T. Blend in and stand out in donut country.